Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on equivalent resistance. In this tutorial, we are being asked to build a circuit whose equivalent resistance is supposed to be 27.5 ohms. We are told to say that we can use as many 10 ohm resistors to build this circuit. So we are restricted to only 10 ohm resistors, but we are told to say we can use as many of them as possible. Now, what we see is that to build this circuit, of course, let me use a different color. So, to build the circuit, let's say we have one point, this is point A, and then the other side we have point B. So, to build this circuit, what we should observe is that if, let's say, our resistors were in series, you see, uh, the circuit is going to have either series or parallel, or maybe a bit of both here and there. But we want to just see what we have to do. If we had series, let's say series, this would be 10 ohms. We know to get the total resistance for a series connection, we just add our resistors, R1, R2, all of them, and when we get what we need. It's not possible for us to get a total resistance of 27.5 just from a series connection. Why? Because our resistors are all 10 by value. So this would be 10. If we added the second one, it would be at 20. By the time we're adding the third one, we have already exceeded our 27.5, so we can't take this route. What this then tells us is that maybe, just maybe, what we have is, we have our connection like this, is a little bit of parallel and there's a little bit of series. Now, we want to see, if there is parallel then, how many resistors are going to be in each line? So let's say we have two continuations. One side, and the other side. So let's say as we're coming through this side, we have one resistor, another resistor, maybe a few more resistors until when we reach this part. So even this side, let's say we have one resistor, maybe a few more resistors here, and then maybe another resistor, and then we continue. So if these resistors all have a value R, so this side we have also this is R, that is R. So what we want to see is how many resistors are actually in each root, this side, and also how many resistors are this side, and then they are supposed to be in parallel. So to determine this, the number of resistors here, all we know is that, okay, if let's say the number of resistors here was A, then the total resistance in this root will have to be A times 10 ohms. Because we know each resistor has a magnitude of 10 ohms and the number of resistors in this root is small letter A. Then multiplying 10 times A will give us the total resistance in this line. The other side as well, if we say the number of resistors in this line is let's say B, then the total resistance in this line is going to be the magnitude of 1 multiplying the number of resistors which have that, that value. So. In other words, we can then look at our circuit as just being something like this. So that in this line, we have one resistor, this side, one resistor. The magnitude of this, this resistor is 10 multiplying B. And here we have 10 multiplying A. So this is what we have. So if you notice what I've done, it's like I'm predicting to say that, okay, if we have a certain number of resistor, resistors in this line, let's say that number is A, then multiply it by the, num by the magnitude of each resistor, which is 10 ohms. So that will give us the total resistance in this line. We're using that method because these resistors, we're saying they are in series. And then the other side again, want to know the number of 10 ohm resistors, which have to be in the line um, so that of course when we combine they give us that 27.5 so with this figured out that is perhaps the only the only part which was quite tricky the next part becomes a little bit obvious so the calculation for total resistance for a, for a parallel connection is one over the total resistance equal to one over the first resistor plus one over the second resistor now in this case we have the total resistance we want it to be 27.5 and then r1 
is just 10 multiplying A. Our 2 is 10 multiplying B. And then from here, single fraction. So this is going to be 1 denominator that's 10 a b so that here we have b and then here we have a okay so when you simplify this we end up with 10 a b equal to 27 Point five a plus twenty seven point five b. So this is the main equation that that we're working with. Now here a and b, what are they? Well, a and b are positive integers. To be specific, a and b are numbers like one. 2, 3, 4, and so on. So they are numbers. Remember how we assigned A and B. A and B were the number of resistors in this line. A was the number of resistors in this line, the number of 10 ohm resistors. And B was the number of 10 ohm resistors, which were here, which are combined to give us this value. So they are positive numbers. They are numbers like 1, 2, 3, and so on. So this is where we are. Now, once we've reached this, po this point, we know A has to be a number 1, 2, 3, and so on. And B also has to be a positive integer um, in that line. Now, how do we get the answer? Well, here's how it works. Well, here we're going to do a little bit of trial and error. All we know is that since A and B, they are positive integers starting from 1, we can try. Okay, let's say A is equal to 1. If A is 1, how will our equation look like? If A is 1, our equation becomes... So where there's A in this equation, so let's say this is equation 1. So where there's A, we're going to have, where there's A, we'll put 1, so this becomes 10B. Equal to, we're seeing A here again, so we'll put 1 there, this becomes 27.5. And then we have where there's A here again, so that we'll put that 1, so now here we have 27.5B. From here, if we tried to work out to solve this for B, what we see is that we're going to have B is equal to 27.5 over, then this will be 10 minus 27.5. This is going to give us a negative number because of this difference down here. This is going to give us a negative number. Because of this fact that it's going to be a negative number, we're going to eliminate this. this. We're going to eliminate it. Why? Because we know A, B has to be, a positive integer as well, not a negative number. It has to be positive. So that is how we picked them. It has to be positive. So we move on. Let's try a different one. Let's say A was B, or as in A was A was 2. If A is 2, what would B give us? Well, in this case, now we have where this A will put 2. Our expression was 10AB. So where this A we put 2, this becomes 20B equal to, again, we're seeing A, so we'll put 2 there again. So if we put 2 there, we'll get 55 plus 27.5B. If we try to work this, this out for B again, so we'll move this to the other side, factor out B, so we're going to have 55 divided by, this is going to be 20 minus 27.5. Again, because of this difference down here, we're seeing that this is going to give us a negative value for B. Again, just like before, this fails because B has to be a positive integer. So A can't be 2. If A is 2, then B is going to be a negative number, So which, which is not possible. B has to be a positive number and an integer. So we try something else. Let's try 3. If A is equal to 3, well, if A is equals to 3, what does that imply? In this case, from our expression, 10AB, now we're going to have 10 multiplying 3 and then a B here. So this is the value of A. So now we have 
6.5 multiplying 3 and then plus the other side we have 27.5b here this becomes 30b equal to then this side this comes to give us 82.5 plus 27.5b group the like terms everything with b This equals to 82. And then when we make B the subject of the formula, we're going to have B is equal to 82.5. The difference here, of course, is going to give us just 2.5. So this is 2.5. Unlike the other, uh, the first two that we did for A is equals to 1 and A is equals to 2, we see that this is not a negative number. So B is coming out as positive. Well, that's a plus. Now, it's not only about B being positive. It has to be an integer again. So here, let's see what we have. Uh, it's positive, yes, but is it going to give us an integer? If we work it out for b, b comes out as 33. Well, this works. So in other words, to build our circuit, we now know to say that a has to be 3 and b has to be 33. Of course, vice versa works as well. We can say a is 33 and b is 3. This will also work. So what does that imply when it comes to building our circuit? Well, it means that our circuit is going to be a combination of, we're going to have 33 10 ohm resistors here. So if this is A and this is B, so in the first part, we say this is where A is. So you can say here we have three. So you can say here we have 10 ohms 10 ohms, 10 ohms. This side, since this side we have 10, we have three 10 ohm resistors. Here we need 33 of them so that when we add those 10 ohm resistors, they're going to give us about 330 ohms. So, yeah, so you can have all the 33 uh, resistors here. But all together, when you bring them, since they will be in series, this is just going to be 330 ohms yeah so of course since they're using they're saying only 10 ohm resistors when showing this you have to show all the all the 33 10 ohm resistors i'm just building the, i'm just writing it like this to simplify it okay so this is this is how you build your your circuit so yeah i hope you guys were able to appreciate this simple trick that we used here yeah Right guys, we'll see you in the next tutorial. This was your tutor.